It's going well! My cooks actually work! <sighs> 11 fights and we scale. <sighs> We're getting close, boys. Good morning, gamers. How's it going? Video dropping today. There is no main channel video this month. Pokedoku. I'm gonna get cooked on this one. I have no idea, Dark Fire. <laughs> um, I mean, like, there's like Incineroar, but I feel like that one's too obvious. There's another one. Dark Fire. The problem is, I'm not sure if the middle stage is Dark Fire or not. There's Houndoom. Let's go Mega Houndoom on this one. Dark Ice, Chien Pao. A legendary dark type. Hit me up with Moltres Galar. Okay, Kalos Pokemon and Galar Pokemon. I'm instantly locking Zapdos Galar here for Legendary, and then Kalos. Zygarde 10%, 50%. There's way better picks here, but... I figured Zygarde would at least be split three ways, I don't know. Kalos Ice-type? I'm getting cooked, I'm not gonna lie. Kalos Fire, I'm gonna lock Volcanion. Ice. Hit me up with Snom. Is that a shiny? Oh, sh that's my first ever shiny. Let's go. Colossal G Max. Ice type Kalos. I'm cooked here. I mean, like, I can really only think of Avalug. What is Avalug's? pre-evolution called. I have no idea. Isn't it like... Oh, it's Bergmite. Okay, I got super cooked on this one. I'm not... This is the worst one I've done in a really long time. Okay, there's only three legendaries. Yeah, good thing I didn't pick Zygarde 10% because it's a... It's not from Kalos. That Pokemon didn't exist good until Gen 7. The rest of the run, man. Anyway, this next fight is pretty awful. It's not as bad as some other stuff that's about to come, but this one was pretty bad. Let me double check my notes real quick. Ursaluna Lore, Dump Heart Scales, we already did that. Thundee, Pult, CB, Cress, Burn, Magnezone, Scarf. How many Heart Scales left? Um, we have now picked up every Heart Scale in the game, so we should have, because we used four on Ursaluna, we should have nine in our inventory right now. Perfect. Okay. <sighs> Alright. It's a debut. It's a new Pokemon. Cresselia will enter the battlefield for the first time. <laughs> it actually does something in this fight. It actually does. Let me double check my ranges here. You're goddamn right. Starmie almost ended my run. This Starmie is horrible. Like, that Starmie alone makes this probably a top three worst trainer. Uh, is that true? The Swampert one's pretty bad. Is it because Analytic is bugged? That's part of what's annoying about it, for sure. The problem with Analytic bug is just like... It makes the bait so inconsistent, you know? Basically, if Starmie comes... If you move before Starmie the last turn, it always thinks it has Analytic boost. So it thinks it does more damage than it actually does, so it super messes up your baits. Anyway, we can one-shot the Snorlax with Facade. So this should go Breloom now. Which is- this thing is also a f***ing demon, by the way. It does so much damage. Alright, we're gonna go to Thundee, because it tanks all of these moves. And more importantly... We need a little bit of chip damage on this guy. Eh? 
This is gonna do so much. So has a focus sash, this Berloom. We need a little bit of chip, so we're going to U-turn here. This is, I think, always Rock Tomb. Skill Link. Nope, it's Technician. Just hit me five times. And then Dragapult always... Ugh, I made a mistake. It's fine if we don't get crit. I wasn't supposed to poison Dragapult. That's the next fight. Please no crit. Okay, we're fine. Okay, Choice Band Dragapult shows fast kill to everything here. Uh, so it baits down the line. I need a second. My heart rate is super spiked. So this should bait, um, Salamence. We block that with clear body. And darts always kills. This is a really nice chain kill. Like we show, we bait, with choice band, we barely show fast kill to the non-mega Sableye. Which means, um, it just baits down the line, so we just get the free kill on the Salamence. And it's... Metagross next, and luckily our HP doesn't matter here. Was the U-turn chip necessary to ensure Darts killed? Yeah. It's close, but yeah. Okay. So this meta, it's a pretty interesting Metagross set. It's got weakness policy. We show fast kill to this with highest roll, but we don't always kill, so we obviously don't go for the kill here. Um, it's weakness policy, clear body, and then it's got stored power and cosmic power, as well as a uh, meteor mash and body press. It's a pretty cool set. The way we find to deal with this set is the debut of Cresselia. No attack raise would be great here. Amazing. We're gonna burn this with Psycho Shift. We don't care how many cosmic powers this sets up. It's burned, its attack is halved. No matter how many cosmic powers this sets up, the weakness po the the store power is just not gonna do that much damage to Crest because despite all the memes and despite how fing dog shit useless this Pokemon is, it is still a super, super, super defensive mon that tanks really, really nicely. And it's got Moonlight to heal. Okay. We're gonna use the fact that Metagross doesn't really have any damage output right now. 
and switch to Araquanid because we need a sticky web to deal with Starmie later. No attack raise would be great, but it's fine. Why did AI send the slower settlements it pulled? Because everything was slower and I showed uh, one KO on everything, so it just goes in team order. Okay, so we can set up Sticky Web now. This is the only way I found to deal with this fucking Starmie, man. It's literally, the Sticky Web is just for the Starmie. I could soak here. I think it's correct. He's plus two, plus two right now. Making him a water type just means that Cresselia kills it faster so we can avoid a little bit of fiction. I'm not in danger of dying at all. Let's soak. Completely fine. So now he no longer gets stab on his um, psychic and steel moves. The way this fictions me, I think we're already kind of out of the woods because he um, uh, cosmic powered a bunch before he got attack boosts off of um, Meteor Mash. If he keeps Meteor Mashing and keeps getting attack boosts off of it, eventually he's going to start doing pretty significant damage to Cresselia. Cresselia needs to be out and at decent HP when this dies um, for this Starmie line to work. So if on the last turn that this is out, uh, it would crit Cresselia, I think there's a chance if he's got enough attack boost that we can be in trouble, but I think we're literally completely fine. Upside of Soak is also that this Psychic is actually going to deal a little bit of damage now. But really not that much. He's plus two, plus two to be fair, but... Chrysalia doesn't do sh** for damage. We have Lepa Berry, by the way, in case we run out of Moonlights, in case this, like, keeps battering me down with, like, attack boosted Meteor Mashes, but from this position, we're actually completely fine. It's all good. All good. He's like, what, plus four, plus four? Or is it five? Sword power does like 20% to me right now. It might be five. That's yeah, all good. Meteor Mash is still higher damage. Oh, wait, no, he's water to that. Well, that would change the sword power damage too. I think Body Press is his highest damage right now. So we out damage Sableye. Um, or no, I think both, yeah, both out damage us, and Starmie is faster, Sableye is slower, so this should always be Starmie, is how this works out. And because Starmie sees no kills, and has a power herb, he always has to exactly Meteor Beam here. Which means... We can go to Scarf Magnazone. Starmie is so, so, so annoying. Probably the, like, one of the most annoying mons to calc against. There's the Meteor Beam. We resist. We're never dead to crit. This gets a plus special attack and a analytic boost because I switched. 
Analytic is horrible, horrible, horrible. Resisted, by the way. And because we're Scarfed and he got webbed, we get to outspeed and Thunderbolt always kills this. And this is Mega Sableye, who's very, very tanky, but not tanky enough to withstand a Life Orb Burned Stab Earthquake. And we know exactly how much damage we can maximum take, because the only way this has to damage Ursa Luna is Seismic Toss. And Burn damage is consistent, Life Orb damage is consistent, Seismic Toss damage is consistent, so I know because I can outspeed and one-shot this, there's no chance for Ursa Luna ever to die in this interaction. up on pre-poisoning the Dragapult for no reason is really scary to me right now. I can't afford to make mistakes like that. Especially because the next fight is probably the hardest in Victory Road. But you know what is a real fight? Shaving your balls. Okay. This fight is, with no exaggeration, the hardest fight in Victory Road by far. Um, if you judge it by how long I... So it's a sun fight. Sorry, I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm told it's the hardest fight in the game. Surprisingly, nobody has told me this yet, but holy f**k. Any sun team with a chlorophyll Venusaur is already terrifying. Like, chlorophyll Venusaurs on sun teams, there's like three in this game, and they're always terrifying. They're always super, super, super scary. Every single time you encounter them, right? Um, super hard to deal with. And somehow, this chlorophyll Venusaur is the third most threatening Pokemon on this team. Lock in. All right. Charizard Mega Y in the lead to set up the sun for the rest of the fight is what we have to deal with here. We are leading with Assault Vest, a Poisoned Armaldo. We're poisoned so that we can't get burned by Heat Wave. Heat Wave has no overlap with Air Slash, so we can't get flinched. Rock Tomb always kills, and with Assault Vest, we never die because Armaldo has battle armor and can never get crit. Armaldo does another thing. There's other stuff that can deal with this Charizard, but Armaldo does something very important here. Very, very important. We bait the Lilligant. And this Lilligant, I don't even, I don't even know, like, what, like, laboratory this fucking thing was forged in? Where was this fucking guy created? Um, Flying Gem Acrobatics, Chlorophyll to go to 466 speed, which is faster than anything I could possibly have, even with Scarf. Um... Stab solar, solar Blade, which instantly charges in the sun for 125 base power. Stab Close Combat for 120 base power. And f***ing Sleep Powder. I can't switch anything into this. I have to hard sack on this. There's no other way. There's no pivots. There's nothing you have. I, I just have to sack. So Francis, my friend, honestly, there was a couple of fights where this guy was f***ing it, man. I remember a couple like Rock Smash, Leech Life setups. You guys remember that? Sh we were doing some crazy stuff with this guy. Super useful Mon. Ideally, what I want to see here, this is full random move one and three. I want to see Lilligant use its flying gem now. It doesn't really matter though if I prep this correctly. That's beautiful.
we go to Cresselia now. Cresselia is burned and is going to psycho shift this to drastically reduce its damage output. We can't kill this with Cresselia. We we could, it's possible to do this 1v1, but the baiting is f***ed if we do that. The thing is, the way I'm going to do this is actually not even that much better, just like kind of marginally. There's still risk though. Um, this is... I'm going to use so many resources in this fight, and it's still not riskless. The first step though is to actually f***ing burn this thing. So you'll notice here... Cresselia's item is Flame Orb, even though it's already burned. The reason for that is twofold. Um, but it's mainly because you lose your burn when you Psycho Shift. And you might remember I mentioned earlier, this Lilligant has Sleep Powder. We can't have this guy putting us to sleep. We also want to burn something else later down the line. So we need to refresh the burn here. One nice thing is that Moonlight actually heals more in the sun, which makes no... Well, actually, I guess it does make sense, because Moonlight is just reflected sunlight, huh? Um, so we're going to take drastically less damage here. We were never dead to crit into crit there, by the way. Um, let's just take a turn to heal here. Cresselia does not have enough PP to just sit on this and out-heal it, because Burn just doesn't do enough damage. over time, but you might have noticed earlier, uh, Lilligant Acrobatics and used up its held item. So it's currently not wearing one. This frees up a nice little piece of technology that we've used before, which is Sticky Barb. Usually these Sticky Barb strats are kind of annoying. Like, right, we're giving him the held item back so no Acrobatics doesn't do damage anymore or like doesn't do a lot of damage anymore to Torterra. That's the strat we're going for here. Okay, so we're gonna switch to Torterra who can't get crit. He doesn't take any damage because this thing is burned. Um. We do not need the Sticky Barb after this. We don't have to get it back. There is no fight we need it on. This is like the power of backwards cooking all the fights. I know for a fact that I'm never going to need the Sticky Barb again. So she can just have it. And now we have enough damage over time to just have this die while we keep ourselves healthy. Um, synthesis, similar to Moonlight, also heals more in the sun here, which is kind of nice. So yeah, this thing doesn't really do any damage anymore. It's got the Sticky Barb now, it'll take damage every turn, and because it has a Held item, the Acrobatics is doing less damage now. In fact, he's just going to close combat instead. We can't get crit, it's all good. We just sit here and wait until this dies. The reason we're doing all of this is because we want Torterra out when this dies, instead of um, Cresselia. Because basically, we need Ninetales to come out next. Um, and the setup to kill this Ninetales is super specific. Um, the problem is, if Ninetales comes out on Cresselia, which it can, depending on the HP range that we're at when this Lilligant dies, um, it can go for Nasty Plot instead of the Freeze Dry, and we need Ninetales to Freeze Dry on the switch to send a Scorch later, okay? Um, for reasons that will become apparent in a bit. The problem is, it can still kind of nasty plot, because Freeze Dry doesn't always kill Torterra. Um, but we can't just take a hit and not Synth, because we don't want it, we, we don't want Ninetales to see a kill with Weather Ball instead. Um, we want it to be always Freeze Dry. So there is a chance we're going to have to steer a little bit here. This is the last turn that Torterra is going to be out. It's going to be full HP when this dies. If we take even a little bit more damage, then Ninetales is going to see a kill with a Weather Ball, which is not good. So Sticky Barb is gone forever now. We don't need it anymore. It's gone. It's fine. It did its job. It was fantastic. Okay, here's Ninetales. So the situation is that Freeze Dry is a 68% chance to kill. This can still nasty plot on the Switch. If it does, things are going to get pretty ugly. It's fine. We can steer out of it. But basically, we need Scorch to take a hit on the Switch in because Scorch is wearing one of our two last Roat Berries, which chips when it, um, for 12.5, when the Pokemon is hit 
by a special move. Importantly, that only works if the Pokemon actually survives. If Scentiscorch were to die here, the berry would not trigger, right? So the problem is, if this Nasty Plots now, and then Nasty Plots again, Ninetales can just kill. The problem is Nasty Plot. Uh, the problem is Ninetales has a Focus Sash that we need to knock off. If Scentiscorch dies to the Ninetales, it's kind of actually fine. We can steer, but it. There, we, we introduce a risk there. So we want this to not be Nasty Plot and then Nasty Plot again, or Nasty Plot into Crit. Perfect. There's the Roap proc. And in the sun, we can just kill with whatever. We're going to go for Fire Lash. <sighs> so the backup here was that um, there was no way for Scentiscorch to die without at least breaking Ninetales' Focus Sash. So then Salazzle could have outsped and killed this after the Focus Sash was broken. But then the baiting line is f***ed up. And then I basically have to risk uh, Salazzle on a, on, a, on a crit later. There's the weather ball. This does a f ton. So this is going to bait the Chlorophyll Venusaur. Again, I was saying this earlier. Chlorophyll Venusaur is one of the most terrifying Pokemon to deal with in this entire game. Just because the coverage is so rough. It's so fast. You can't really outspeed it with anything. Like, And Venusaur is like the third most terrifying Pokemon on this team. Sandiscorch does one more important thing on this fight, <laughs> lads. And it's been a long time coming. It has been a long time coming. But finally, the witch must die. I can't switch anything into this Venusaur safely. This guy did pretty well. Fantastic early game. Later on, just outclassed by... Um, Arcanine at every corner. See ya, buddy. <sighs> Luckily, Choice Scarf Salazzle outspeeds this Venusaur in the sun. It's not a good day to be a bug type on this team, man. This is gonna be Rhyperior next for slow kill. This is really the so the important part of routing this fight was to make sure that Rhyperior comes in pretty late, at least after I until, after I kill the Nine Tails, because this Rhyperior really wants to set up Stealth Rocks, and if the Stealth Rocks are up, my Santa Scorch is obviously f***ed, right, um, and just is gonna die and can't do any damage. <sighs> Torterra can just come back in here, tank anything that throws at it, outspeed and always kill with Giga Drain, so... I needed the slot for Torterra anyway, so the torterra um, uh, Cresselia combo on the Lilligan just kind of made sense. This just kind of... Like, this is like the adjustment I made last on this fight, is initially I had Cresselia 1v1-ing this, and then I thought of the Sticky Barb thing and using Torterra for that, because I don't need an item to 1v1 this Rhyperior. We can just outspeed and kill with Giga Drain here. Welcome back, less than three. And finally, there's Gudra, who's also really scary. One more nice thing about using the Torterra plus Cresselia combination here is that I saved most of my Moonlight PP on Cresselia. So we can just go back to her here, tank a Weather Ball, it's all good.
This is using special moves on Cresselia. Um, give me one second here to check some damage ranges. So we're faster than this, which is really important. Um, so the Psycho Shift doesn't do anything for its damage output against Cresselia, but it matters for, my, for its damage output against my Gudra. This fight is why we need to keep Outrage on Gudra, by the way. Because, um, yeah, this thing has a lot of special defense, so we kind of need a physical move. Anyway, we're free to Psycho Shift here to, re -burn, to burn this again. Another reason we need the Flame Orb. Crit is completely fine here. And we can heal up a f ton in the sun with boosted moonlight. We need this to take a little bit of burn chip before we go to Gudra. So we're just going to sit here and Moonlight a couple more times. Cresselia showing up for like two fights ever. <laughs> it is what it is, man. We don't talk about Latios. Sub for absolutely free. Because, let's be honest, you have Amazon Prime anyway. You should try it. You guys have no idea how many times during the Elite Four cook I was sitting here and I was like, why the f didn't I get Latios? Why the f didn't I get Latios? <laughs> it's so good, man. The reason we burned this is because now Earthquake doesn't do enough damage to kill Gudra. And uh, our Gudra can't get crit. So these Weather Balls are completely safe to tank. And because this is last mon, we can just kill with Outrage. Okay. That was the scariest one for me. This is the one I was the most unsure about. This so just go down in history. just to Here recap, that fight, we invested two whole sacks, our sticky barb, nice. one of our two Roat yeah. berries, and it was still not riskless. Fucking <laughs> crazy, man. What's your confidence level now after this battle? A lot higher. Nine fights to go. Technically 11.